Is anybody measuring code coverage? Okay, do you have a target number? What's the target number? 85. So it's okay if 15% of the code doesn't work. Right? There is no target number that makes any sense other than 100%. Right? You can't go around and say, you know, we've got 80% code coverage. Well, I guess 20% doesn't work then. The only target that makes any sense at all is 100%, and you cannot achieve it. You can't get to 100%, so you have to look at it as an asymptotic goal, a goal that you keep on trying, you keep on working to whittle that code coverage down, but you'll never get to 100%. Number two, <clears throat> don't let managers see that number ever. It is not a management metric. Managers don't understand what the metric means. Code coverage doesn't mean anything outside of the context of the team. The team understands what it means. The team knows that those are the lines of code that are executed, and the team understands how many asserts are in the tests. If you make this a management metric, and, and by God help you, help you, if you actually put it in the build and fail the build if you don't meet the number, then what happens is the programmers, in order to make the number, will start pulling asserts out of the tests. And the tests will become meaningless, and the code coverage number will shoot through the sky. You can get 100% that way. Don't do that. This is not a management metric. It's a team metric. It's a personal introspection metric. You get the coverage of the code that you are working on. The team gets the coverage of the code they are working on. They look at it privately. They assess what it means in the context of the system, and they act accordingly. But they don't publish the number, and it is not a goal.